Pump.fun is one of the largest token launchpads and trading platforms on Solana. And if you ever wondered how you can track and replicate some of the biggest whales on Pump.fun, then you are in the right place. In this video, we will learn how we can easily copy trades from these big whales or any account on Pump.fun. And please note that this video is for educational purposes only and should not be considered financial advice. Always perform main net trades and investments carefully and at your own discretion. So without any ado, let's jump into it. So before getting into the code, let's understand how the flow would look like. First, what we will be doing is we will be adding a subscription to the pump.fun program on the Solana blockchain using Yellowstone gRPC API. So Yellowstone gRPC Geyser plugin API is a quick run marketplace add-on using which you can add custom subscriptions for events on the Solana blockchain and you'll get those events as soon as they happen on the Solana blockchain. Then once we get those events, those events for whale transactions on pump.fun, what we will be doing is we will be using Metis Swap API, which is another quick run marketplace add-on using which you can construct pump.fun swap transactions. You can also use Metaswap API for your Jupyter swaps, routes, codes, etc. So once we have the swap transaction constructed, we will be using Quicknode RPC to send that transaction to the blockchain. So this is how basically the flow would look like. We will get the whale transaction events using Yellowstone gRPC API. We will use Mantis Swap API to construct those swap transactions for prompt.fun. And then finally, we will send or submit those transactions using Quicknode RPC. And now let's get into the code. Let's see how it actually works and what the code looks like. So for our script, we will be installing four libraries. The first one will be Solana Web3.js 1, base58 library, .n library, and the Yellowstone gRPC library. So this is how the environment variable will look like, where first we will have the Solana RPC from Quicknode, then the secret key for your wallet, the Metis endpoint, which you will get once you have the Metis Swap API installed on your endpoint, then the Yellowstone endpoint and Yellowstone token. So if your Quicknode endpoint is something something dot Solana mainnet dot quicknode.pro slash your authentication token. So what you need to do is you need to remove the slash, add a colon and then add 10,000 because that's the port number for Yellowstone gRPC API and then add the authentication token in this variable. And please make sure that you do not share this environment variable on any code sharing platforms or publicly like GitHub. To get your quicknode RPC and the other APIs, you can just go to your Quicknote dashboard, create a Solana endpoint and go to the Solana endpoint, then navigate to the add-on section, look for Metis Jupyter Swap API and Yellowstone gRPC Geyser plugin add-on and you'll find the add-on over here under the uninstalled add-ons. But since I already have them installed on my endpoint, you can see that they are installed and present under the installed add-ons section. So let's get back to our code. Once you have all of these environment variables pasted in the environment file, let's start with our actual code, which will be in JS. So what we are basically doing over here is importing all the necessary libraries and modules from those libraries, and then starting a class called crypto trade bot. And in there we have a config for our events tracker where we have a watch list and a pump.fun config. In watch list, we can just add wallet addresses, which will be whale wallet addresses or any wallet address you want to track trades for. And you can add as many wallets you want. But for demo purpose, I won't be adding or suggesting you all a wallet address. I'll just use my wallet address perform a trade on pump.fun so that we can track my wallet addresses trade and perform a trade using a different wallet address, which I will be adding in the environment variable file. Now comes the pump.funds configuration where we have the pump.fun program ID over here, the buy and sell discriminators, which you can get from pump.fun IDL, the token decimals, target accounts, then the minimum transaction amount, minimum buy amount, where you can set 
the limit where you only want to track for transactions or trades above a certain limit of tokens or a certain amount of tokens you would be able to do that with these variables and then what we will be doing is we will be logging each successful trade or successful swaps once we do copy trade in a file called pump underscore fun underscore swaps dot json and then this will hold the commitment level of our yellowstone and this is a flag which if set true we will only simulate the transactions instead of actually sending them to the solana mainnet to see how the script works and uh, not actually sending the transactions then we are initializing a constructor where we are validating the environment variables establishing a connection with our solana rpc and initializing the wallet from the secret which we stored in the environment variable and then logging few messages to validate the environment variable we are using this function validate env which we already added in the constructor and that will be called once we initialize the script or run the script so we have these as the required environment variables and if any of these are not present the script will throw an error and after that we have the fetch swap transaction function which will communicate to the pump.fun api via the metaswap api to get the pump.fun swap transaction instructions or construct the transaction basically where in the body section we have all the config for the transaction and in fetch we are using the metaswap endpoint along with the particular method pump dash fun slash swap to construct the swap transaction and the, the, the constructed transaction will be written in json format then we have another function sign transaction to sign the transaction using key pair generated from the secret which we have in the environment variable and then send and confirm transaction will actually send the transaction after that we have a function called log swap which will log all the swaps successful not successful along with their errors into a file called pump underscore fun underscore swaps dot json which is over here which will be created after the first successful or first attempt of swap from our bots wallet address and then we are also pushing every new entry of swap into the file and then we have a function handle whale by where it will look for minimum transaction amount which we already set in the pump dot fun configuration earlier and if it matches it it will return these data and call fetch swap transaction and then whenever our script will detect a whale transaction we will need some logic to execute our transaction so or handle our transaction or copy transaction so for that we have handle whale by function where it will fetch the swap instructions from the json which we get from metaswap api and uh, return these values and then get the transaction or sign transaction from the sign transaction method and if the value of test mode is not set true it will actually send the transaction by executing the send and confirm transaction and log the transaction id with a message called a copy then we have a create subscription request function to create a subscription request to Yellowstone GRPC API and send subscribe request will actually send that request created by create subscription request function to Yellowstone and then handle stream events will be used to handle the streaming events which we get from the Yellowstone API which uses handle data function which actually parses the data we get from yellowstone api where we first check if the incoming transactions are from pump.fun then we check if the transactions are buy or sell and if the transactions are buy transactions we call handle whale by method which will execute our copy trade to do all of that we are using some helper functions where we will be using is subscribe update transaction function to check if the data whatever we got from yellowstone stream is a transaction or not and uh, we will be using convert signature to convert the signature into base 58 encoded format then we have parse u64 which parses the 64-bit unsigned integer data of instructions to get the token amount and sol amount and get instruction data will be actually used to get the token amount and sol amount based on the known offsets from the program ideal 
then get transaction type determines if the transaction is of type buy or sell again looking at the discriminators which we added earlier in the config over here these and then match instruction discriminator matches with the discriminators which we again described in the pump.fun config earlier then monitor whales function will actually monitor those whale transactions or events by first creating the subscript Send request using create subscribe request function then send the subscription request using the send subscribe request function both of which we defined earlier then handle stream events which uses handle data if you remember both of which again defined earlier then we are creating an entry point for our bot and start and outside of the copy trade function we are creating a main function where we are initializing our bot and then finally calling our main function. So this is how the script will look like. And you can also find the written version in the description below. Now, since the only wallet address in the watch list array is one of my own test wallet address, we will perform a trade using this wallet address and our bot should copy that trade using another test wallet address, which I have already configured in environment variable using secret key. So if we go here, go to pump.fun and as you can see, my wallet address is already connected 2767 ending with RTQJ, which is this. Now, if we go back to pump.fun, look for any tokens. Oh, first let's uh, initialize the bot or run the bot so as you can see it's running under simulation mode right now because we have the test mode true so it won't execute any transaction or copy transaction it will still detect those transactions made by my wallet address because we are watching one of my wallet address so let's just uh, buy a token so as you can see, it has detected that and uh, you can see that this was the user. The mint address for the token was this. The quantity of Sol used were this and the token out quantity was this. So this is how you can monitor it. Now let's try to run it under test mode, false mode, where it will actually perform the copy trade transaction. So now let's run the bot again and buy a token. So you can see that uh, it has detected that buy from my wallet address. And now it should be sending the copy. Looks like I ran into an issue. All right. So the issue was that my bot wallet or the wallet in my bot was not funded. So always remember to fund the wallet which you are adding to your bot now let's run the script again okay so it's listening now let's buy a token okay you can see that it detected the swap and it successfully executed the copy trade let's look at the transaction id on sol scan or any explorer okay so you can see that we successfully bought this token by monitoring a wallet address and we bought it using another wallet address which was in our pot which was this and we copy traded the wallet which i had in phantom which is this which starts with 2767 which we had on the watch list. So this is how you can watch any wallet address and automate your copy trades based on their trades. So I hope you learned something from this video. And again, be very mindful of whatever trading or investments you do on the mainnet. This video is just for educational purposes and by no means is a financial advice. All the best.